Man, I don't know what game I should review next. No. No, not that one. Ah, uh, not that one either. What the fuck? Okay. I've loved the WarioWare series ever since the first installment on the Game Boy Advance. What made WarioWare stand out from other minigame compilations up to that point was the fact that the game had what it called micro games. These micro games were super fast paced and included odd actions the player had to perform that were usually described in only one or two words. It was extremely frantic and a ton of fun. The thing is, Game & Wario isn't a WarioWare game at all. It has the same style and personality as a WarioWare game, but it's more of a traditional minigame collection rather than a WarioWare style micro game collection. Wario's up to his same old antics again in Game & Wario. A new console's come out and he decides to create the greatest game of all time to make some mad bank. The game consists of 16 different minigames that try to show off the advantages of the Wii U gamepad's multiple control options. It feels very similar to Nintendo Land in this way, and a few of the games even feel like they were ripped directly from Nintendo Land. Also reminiscent of Nintendo Land, Game & Wario's minigames are separated into single-player minigames as well as multiplayer minigames, although a couple of the single-player games can also be played with friends too. The problem with Game & Wario though is that the package is the definition of a mixed bag. There are some games that are just plain bad, while there are others that are pretty fun. A couple games that fall under the bad category are Ashley and Ski. Ashley, named after the character you play as, is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up where you don't actually shoot anything yourself. All you're tasked with doing is collecting as many pink pellets as you can. The game also doesn't use the Wii U gamepad in any unique way either. In Ski, you play as Jimmy T trying to pick up as many beautiful ladies as possible. It plays basically exactly the same as the F-Zero minigame in Nintendo Land, where you have a bird's eye view of the action on the gamepad, and that was one of the worst attractions in that game too. There's also a time trial mode, but there's no depth to make any of it worthwhile. To go along with these games that just aren't any good, there are some games which were literally Wii U tech demos that seem to have been tacked onto the game without much added content. Design is one such game where you're challenged to draw different shapes as accurately as possible. The concept is neat, but there's nothing to keep you coming back. Another game that was shown off as a tech demo is Shudder. Shudder uses the Wii U gamepad as a camera while you take pictures of different people along the way. It's one of those games that really shows off the potential of the Wii U, but doesn't take it far enough. The game just makes me want a Wii U version of Pokemon Snap. Seriously Nintendo, get on that. There are those mediocre games, but then we get to one like Gamer, which is both fun and which shows off the advantages of the Wii U. You play as Ninevolt, who's feverishly trying to sneak in as much gaming time as he can in his bed without his crazy mom noticing. On the Wii U gamepad, you play classic WarioWare style micro games, while on the TV, you have to be on the lookout for Ninevolt's mom. Trust me when I say this game gets incredibly tense. Also, is it just me, or is it weird that there's an old man dressed as your mom walking around outside your house? There are a good number of other single player minigames as well, but for the most part, they're just all okay. You'll have fun with them for what they are, but they probably won't hold your attention for long. Where Game & Wario really shines is the multiplayer. Although there are only four multiplayer minigames, three out of the four are incredibly fun. Disco is the odd man out, being a fairly boring rhythm challenge game that you can play with one other person on the gamepad. Sketch, Fruit, and Islands are the three minigames in the entire package that you'll most likely come back to again and again, and each can be played with up to five players. Sketch is literally just Pictionary. Sure, that may seem lazy and uninspired, but hell, I enjoy me some Pictionary. Each player gets a point by either guessing the word correctly or for every drawing they draw that is successfully guessed. The person with the most points is obviously the winner. Islands has you and your friends flinging fronks onto different targets to try to rack up as many points as possible. There's a lot of randomness to the game, but that just makes everything much crazier. 
Each of the stages add a unique twist and keep the game engaging. Finally, there's my personal favorite game, Fruit. The concept is simple. There are up to four agents who are tasked with spotting the sought-after fruit thief. Each of the agents are also competing, so they're not supposed to work together. The player using the gamepad must try to blend in with the crowd and steal the fruit without being caught. That's much easier said than done, though. Needless to say, the game gets extremely competitive, and stealing all the fruit without anyone noticing is a real thrill. To go along with the 16 minigames, Game & Wario also has what I believe is the best use of Miiverse to date in Miiverse Sketch. Players can suggest words, and then others will have to draw their interpretation of that word or phrase in 60 seconds or less. The end result is some absolutely hilarious drawings that I could personally spend tons of time browsing through. Rounding out the package is the capsule machine where you can unlock familiar toys and collectibles that are pooped out by a chicken. This is where a bulk of the wacky charm of the older WarioWare games lie as there are tons of stupid little toys to play with that will surely make you smile. From spinning Beyblade-esque tops to whatever is going on here. Presentation-wise, Game & Wario has the same style as the WarioWare games from the beautiful 2D animations to all the incredible title cards that each minigame has. Whoever designed those title cards needs a medal or something. The music in the game is also very strong, with wacky tunes that fit every game just right. I'd even go as far as to say the music is one of my favorite parts of the entire game. There is some fun to be had with Game & Wario. The single player minigames are okay for the most part, and the multiplayer minigames will keep you busy with your friends. At the same time though, Game & Wario just makes me want another traditional WarioWare style game. I mean, that's not too surprising seeing as how Gamer is one of my favorite games in the whole bunch. If you're a WarioWare fan, or if you've got friends that are willing to play the multiplayer games with you, I think at $20, Game & Wario would be a pretty good purchase, but as it stands, Game Warrior doesn't have enough going for it to really warrant a purchase. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, you know, you can click that like button, and if you really enjoyed it, you could hit that subscribe button, which would really make me happy, but, uh, you know what would make me even happier? Clicked on one of those annotations, because, uh, if you don't, I'll lose the game, and I don't want to lose the game. So, if you want to check out one of my other reviews, you can click on that annotation, and if you want to see somebody else's opinion on the WarioWare series, you can check out my buddy Bladeblur's video over here. So, yeah, do that, or, you know, we might all die. I don't know. It might happen. So, bye. Ho, ho, ho.